In the quiet of the night, the streets of Los Angeles were dark. Only a few streetlights were on, making shadows on the ground. But on September 13, 1997, something shocking happened that woke up the whole city. The Dunbar Armored Robbery, where $18.9 million in cash was stolen. But this wasn't your normal robbery. This is the crazy true story of mastermind Alan Pace, who doesn't have any criminal records and decided to do something bold with his friends. Instead of going after a bank, they aimed for the place that supplies banks with cash, the Dunbar Armored Facility. Now, the question is, how did this group of friends become famous as America's biggest cash robbery? How did they do it without any experience? And did they get caught or not? To understand this, we need to watch the whole story. The mastermind behind this robbery, Alan Pace had worked as a security employee at Dunbar Armored and was familiar with the inner workings of the depot where the robbery occurred. With a year and a half of experience under his belt, Alan had risen to the position of safety director for the company. Alan knew everything about Dunbar Armored, like when money came in and went out. He thought about robbing it, but he knew he couldn't do it alone. He needed a good team he could trust. Alan knows there is only his childhood friend whom he can trust blindly, and they had not been troubled before with police records. During the night, they all worked as bouncers in different clubs around Los Angeles. But when Alan suggested a big robbery to his friends, not everyone was on board, and he didn't have anyone else he trusted enough to join in. But after a long discussion, Alan convinced this to be a one-time robbery that would set them for life. Now this friends group was ready to attempt this robbery and they promised that if one of them got caught by the police, that person would take the blame alone and not tell the other's name. Alan was a leader of this group. He provided them with an exact diagram of the depot. He did his homework while working there. Without him, they wouldn't have been able to capture the pictures of the facility from the outside and inside. He was able to capture the locations of the video cameras in the hallways so the others could see what the hallways and doorways would look like. He also figured out where all the security cameras were so they could avoid them. When it was time to act, Alan laid out each step they needed to take. They managed to avoid the cameras, overcome the guards, and take control of the security command post. With Alan leading the way, they quickly accessed the vault, grabbed the cash, and loaded it into their getaway car. He had taken pictures while working there, so they knew what the security guards looked like, which helped them pull off the heist smoothly. Alan and his boys knew all of the entrances and exits after driving by a few times, weeks before the robbery was to happen. But a week before the big robbery, something unexpected happened which no one had thought of. Alan got a call saying he lost his job. Now this news made their already risky plan even scarier. Dunbar Armored told Alan that you are fired because of tampering with company property. They also asked for his keys back. This robbery is becoming a now or never situation for Alan. He decided that they had to do the robbery right away. He called his friends and said, we're doing it tonight. Following Alan's instructions, the robbery team got together at a house party in Long Beach. They did this to make it look like they were somewhere else during the robbery. Late at night, they all put on black clothes and masks. They also put on radio headsets to talk to each other and check their guns before driving about 25 miles to downtown Los Angeles. Since it was late at night, there wasn't much traffic and they reached downtown in less than half an hour. It was a few minutes past midnight when they arrived at the Dunbar facility downtown. They were able to drive their rented U-Haul truck into the parking lot smoothly. During the planning stages, Alan had found out that the guard who watched the camera for the parking lot had recently gotten a new truck. He always kept the camera focused on his truck so he could keep an eye on it. Their first task is to avoid being seen by the security cameras in the hallways. When Alan and his team went inside, they stayed close to the wall to stay hidden. They used a key from Alan to unlock the door. They also had secret codes and only called each other by numbers. The robbers head to the cafeteria where they quickly grab the cafeteria workers and keep them as hostages. Around 12.30 a.m., most of the guards leave for their lunch break. As each guard comes to the cafeteria, the robbers surprise them and hold them captive too, making sure they can't call for help. They tie up all the captured guards with duct tape, making them lie face down on the floor. 
They also take the key for the room where they prepare the vault from one of the guards they caught. This room had a camera they couldn't avoid, so they rushed the two armed guards inside. They tied them up and warned them to keep their heads down or they'd be in danger. One robber always kept an eye on them. Then, they pressed a red button, and a robber drove the U-Haul truck into the depot. This U-Haul truck is rented by robbers. Alan knew that on Friday nights, the vault was left open because the employees were putting the cash needed for weekend shopping inside it. The money in the vault was sorted by where it needed to go for delivery. Alan also knew which routes had the most valuable bills. He didn't touch the bills that were going on routes with smaller bills. They chose the best bills because Alan knew about the routes. He also made sure they didn't take any new bills with numbers that went in order, because those could be traced back to the robbery. Every minute they spent there was risky because at any time, a Dunbar truck or the police could show up. The robbers quickly put the bags of cash on metal carts and roll them to where the trucks are loaded. They put the cash into their truck. In just 30 minutes, they move a huge $18.9 million in cash. But before they left, they had two more things to do. They found the video recorders and took them along with the tapes. One was easy to find in a supervisor's office, but the other one was hidden. It was behind a locked closet in a locked cabinet, far from the vault. They knew about it because Alan's ex-girlfriend, who used to work there, told them. She used to change the tape in the backup recording system, and she shared this secret with him. The robbers also smash cameras on the way out. Without a single gunshot being fired, Alan Pace and his crew have pulled off the largest cash heist in American history. The robbers went to an apartment owned by one of them and changed back into their regular clothes. They then return to the house party in Long Beach and act normal. While many thieves might be reckless and spend their money right away, these robbers are smarter. Alan gives each member of the crew $100,000 to spend quietly without attracting attention. The rest of the money will be kept safe until it's safe to use it. They put the remaining $18.2 million in garbage bags and store them in a self-storage facility. A special team made up of local police, the FBI, and other government agents gets together fast to look into the robbery. The Dunbar Company and their insurance company, Lloyd's of London, are offering $125,000 to anyone who can help catch the robbers. But the investigators soon reach a point where they can't find any more clues. There are no fingerprints to track down. During the robbery, the thieves only referred to each other using numbers, so no names to trace. And there's no video footage of the crime either. The investigators are sure that someone who knows the Dunbar Armored Facility very well helped with the robbery. They think this because the robbers knew about backup security tapes and took them too. Now they're talking to the people who work there, hoping someone knows something important. During these discussions, one common question is, who do you think might have done this from among the employees? Surprisingly, the name Alan Pace keeps getting mentioned. The only clue the authorities have is a small plastic piece from a taillight found at Dunbar's loading dock. It doesn't belong to any of the company's vehicles. The FBI's forensics lab in Washington checks it out and figures out it's from a U-Haul truck that's 14 feet long. But that doesn't really help because lots of people rent U-Haul trucks in LA. The only person they know is Alan. They checked if he rented a truck around the time of the robbery, but he didn't. Investigators keep an eye on Alan and also look at his money records but they find nothing. Alan is living quietly at his mom's house. He hasn't bought anything fancy. He avoids going to the self-storage center where the money is hidden. Surprisingly, Alan doesn't even have a bank account. The investigators can't find anything else. Over six months pass, Alan slowly starts giving money to his team. He plans to buy rental homes with his share of the money, retire, and live off the rent. Few times passes, the robbers start buying cars and houses with cash. They get other people to buy at least 10 homes at public auctions of foreclosed properties. These homes are either occupied by their relatives or rented out. The robbers come to realize that they accidentally took several bags of new money with serial numbers in order, which could tie them to the robbery. Allen advises them that this money needs to be destroyed. Some of the robbers go to one of their homes with a fireplace and try to burn the money. But US money doesn't burn easily, so it takes a long time. The robbers decided to go to Las Vegas instead and use the new money on slot machines. But the fresh bills get stuck in the machines. So they decide to wash the money in a washing machine to make it usable. 
more time passes. Alan starts a company called Extreme Entertainment that rents party stuff. But really, it's just a way to make the stolen money look clean. He puts his friends on the company's payroll and pays them all a lot of money. Everything is going smoothly. But one of the team members makes a mistake that ends up catching all of them. About two years after the robbery, one of the robbers, Eugene Hill, makes a serious mistake. He hires a real estate broker to buy a property and gives him a bunch of cash that's still wrapped in the original bands. The broker gets suspicious and tells the police. The authorities look into it and realize that the dates and handwriting on the bands match the money stolen from the Dunbar place. They start looking into Eugene's money records and also ask for thousands of U-Haul records. They found out Hill rented a 14-foot U-Haul truck right before the robbery and returned it after. When the police caught Hill, they found more cash in the original wrappers. Hill confessed and told about the others to get a shorter punishment. Allen and the other five robbers were arrested and put on trial in the spring of 2001. Allen said he didn't do the robbery. He claimed his old friends were trying to get back at him because he had been involved with one of their wives. Four of Allen's team members admitted they did it and were sent to prison for 10 years. The fifth robber got 17 and a half years. Allen, the mastermind of the criminals, received a 24-year prison sentence. Additionally, the robbers are told to give back $18.9 million they stole. Investigators have found around $7 million of the stolen money. Most of it was used to buy houses, cars, and other things. It's believed that hundreds of thousands of dollars were either burnt or lost while gambling in Las Vegas. Many officials believe that as much as $10 million is still hidden somewhere. However, as of fall 2024, this money has not been discovered. Check out our BlackRock video for all the thrilling details. It's packed with suspense, surprises, and fascinating stories. Don't miss it.